This program is brought to you by Stanford University. Please visit us at stanford.edu. If you're a normal mammal, what stress is about is three minutes of screaming terror on the savanna, after which it's either over with or over with. Over the last three decades, Stanford University neurobiologist Robert Sapolsky has been advancing our understanding of stress, how it impacts our bodies, and how our social standing can make us more or less susceptible. Is the aggregate bad news? And Most of the time, you can find him teaching and researching in the high-achieving, high-stressed world of brain science. This paper is this huge contrast between glass. But that's only part of his story. For a few weeks every year or so, Sapolsky shifts his lab to a place more than 9,000 miles away on the plains of the Masai Mara Reserve in Kenya, East Africa. You live in a place like this, you're a baboon, and you only have to spend about three hours a day getting your calories. And if you only have to work three hours a day, you got nine hours of free time every day to devote to making somebody else just miserable. They're not being stressed by lions chasing them all the time. They're being stressed by each other. They're being stressed by social and psychological tumult invented by their own species. They're a perfect model for westernized stress-related disease. Because what stress is about is somebody is very intent on eating you or you are very intent on eating somebody and there's an immediate crisis going on. When you run for your life, basics are all that matter. Lungs work overtime to pump mammoth quantities of oxygen into the bloodstream. The heart races to pump that oxygen throughout the body so muscles respond instantly. You need your blood pressure up to deliver that energy. You need to turn off anything that's not essential. Growth, reproduction, you know, you're running for your life. This is no time to ovulate. Tissue repair, all that sort of thing. Do it later if there is a later. When the zebra escapes, its stress response shuts down. But human beings can't seem to find their off switch. We turn on the exact same stress response for purely psychological states, thinking about the ozone layer, the taxes coming up, mortality, 30-year mortgages. We turn on the same stress response, and the key difference there is we're not doing it for a real physiological reason, and we're doing it nonstop. After a while, the stress response is more damaging than the stressor itself because the stressor is some psychological nonsense that you're falling for. No zebra on earth running for its life would understand why fear of speaking in public would cause you to secrete the same hormones that it's doing at that point to save its life. I'm studying stress for 30 years now, and I even tell people how they should live differently. So presumably, I should have incorporated all of this, and the reality is, like, I'm unbelievably stressed and type A and poorly coping, and, like, why else would I study this stuff 80 hours a week? No doubt everything I advise is going to lose all its credibility if I keel over dead from a heart attack in my early 50s. Nah, I'm not good at dealing with stress, you know. One thing that works to my advantage is I love my work and I love every aspect of it, so that's good. But nonetheless, this is pretty clearly a different place than uh, the savanna in East Africa. You know, you can do science here that's very different and more interesting in some ways. You can have hot showers on a more regular basis. It's a more interesting, varied world in lots of ways, but you know, there's a lot out there that you sure miss. The preceding program is copyrighted by Stanford University. 
please visit us at stanford.edu.